How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special edition of the Lowdown Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT, and No Holds Barred, anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co-host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. If you want to listen to us on the go, ladies and gentlemen, we are available to follow on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker. Spreaker is a fantastic podcast app that you can download, chat with us live on the air, and see all previous episodes of the podcast. Go check it out and follow us on there. You can also watch any video versions of the podcast, unboxings, 2K content, all that jazz on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash NHBWR. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week on the Lodum Show, especially this one, the special edition episode, I am joined by my co-host, he is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 2018 NXT preview, special edition of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to preview a year Basically, what's in store for NXT this year in 2018? The glorious 2018. And speaking of glorious in the chat, we have glorious Greg. He's here. We also have Cuba Girl 125. Miss Trix is here and hyped for Russell Kingdom 12 tomorrow, even if I can't watch it. Yes, it's going to be at 2 a.m. tomorrow morning, Eastern time. Um, Yeah, I won't be able to watch that. I'm going to wait and probably catch it sometime in the afternoon. Um, But I'm going to stay off Twitter until then so I don't see any freaking spoilers. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, Twitter's off limits for that. Mm-hmm. That's why I hate Twitter spoilers. Yeah, I can't wait. It looks like a really good event, Wrestle Kingdom 12. I'm really pumped for that. And uh, we might do, we might not do a review for it. We'll let you guys know. But uh, other than that, Lowdown Show, we are at episode 84. 84 of this Lowdown Show. We are close to 100 episodes of the Lowdown Show. Not the podcast, but the Lowdown Show. Couldn't tell you what the podcast one. I still have yeah. to go back and count every episode. But of the Lowdown show itself, since we started this show, we are at episode 84. It's a lot of episodes. It's getting there. And this one is a special edition episode, ladies and gentlemen, 2018 NXT preview, as you've seen. We are going to preview a year-long worth of NXT and what we think is going to happen in NXT, what we has to do with champions, call-ups, all that jazz, we are going to preview what we think is has, NXT has in store for us in the year of 2018. It should be another big year. It looks like it's shaping up to be another huge year, as it always been. The last two or three years have been massive for NXT, and it's come a long way since its uh, inception back. And I think it was like, I'm not talking about the NXT days where it was like the one on PG television where they had those like stupid seasons. I'm talking about the ones where it was at, you know, at the, in Orlando, you know, where Seth Rollins first started out and Roman Reigns and. Neville was like the first, like Neville was NXT champion, like those days. I think that was like, I want to say 2014, 2013. I think it was around 2013. Yeah, well, we didn't have the network then. Mm-hmm. But, uh, oh yeah, of course, Greg. By the way, happy Rusev Day. It is another day. It is another Rusev oh, Day. Oh my lord. Yes, QBR, I did hear that they're showing, uh, Cappy just informed me before we went on the air, that Cole and Drew McIntyre are going to face each other in that, re- that match where they had special guest Shawn Michaels. Really weird how they're showing that. Yeah, because that made fucking sense. Yeah, they're showing a match of a guy who's injured now. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a live event, so it's gonna be yeah. like one of those weird live event cameras. Yeah, I'll just I'll go back and watch. I'm not too excited. Like it will be kind of something interesting to watch, but I'm not gonna you know like drop everything and go watch it. They're doing their NXT awards tonight too, so it's not really a regular yeah. edition of NXT. So we're not reviewing it, and that's why we're doing this at the same time. Yeah, it's not like it's like a Jinder Mahal match where it's like must see, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know everyone's like dying to see gender when SmackDown comes hey, around every week. Hey, on that best of NXT NXT DVD I have, they the finals of that tournament is Seth Rollins versus Jinder Mahal. Yeah, back when he wasn't using steroids, when he was more respectable, you know. Yeah, when he was uh, don't hinder gender, man. Yeah, <laughs> I think that was wasn't the don't hinder gender like during the whole three MB era. <laughs> True, yeah. It was like uh, his first run in, yeah. Okay, we're not here to talk about gender. <laughs> Coming from you. 
Yeah, I mean, you're his biggest fan, so. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, guys, we're here to talk about NXT in 2018, and um, me and Cappy have a uh, well. I created a list here what we should do, and uh, basically it has each of each of these have a category. And I, if I can open it up, I don't know why I don't have it open here. I just had it open today because I I've sent got it to it you. Open too. Oh, man, wow, it's 2018. Kyle's already botching. I've just I have too much crap on my desktop. I I meant to clean it up there. I found it. I meant to clean up my desktop. There's too much stuff on it with all the editing and stuff I do. So it's just everywhere. Okay, I found it. So basically the first category is NXT call-ups. And then we got NXT, the next NXT champions uh, for the main champion, the women's the tag team. Uh, who are the next independent signings are going to be? Uh, the next future endeavored. The next breakout star. Rookie of the year. The next type of takeover. As we saw this past year, we had the war games. Uh, we maybe there's going to be another kind of uh, takeover in store for NXT. We'll, we'll give our opinions of what we think might happen. If there will be a new GM or a new title belt announced. So I, I added a couple categories. I couldn't think of anything else. Um, if you guys know anything, let us know in the chat uh, what we should talk about. But uh, other than that, those are the categories we're going to go over for today's show. Um, so let's just mm-hmm. jump into it and get into the yeah. first category. It's a cold, snowy night here. So yeah, <laughs> well, uh... up in Canada, eh? Canadia. <laughs> Canadia. Um, NXT call-ups. Why not? We'll start off hot with a really hot topic, and a lot of people like talking about this around this time of year, especially around the Royal Rumble time. Everyone's always talking about that next NXT call-ups. And also, uh, you can uh, take uh, Brooklyn uh, is another day that people usually talk about the next set of NXT calls. But usually the Royal Rumble, people always think that this is where they're going to debut, and we've have seen it before, uh, a.k.a. Ty Dillinger last year. Um, so these are what we think are going to happen, but it's not just for the Royal Rumble. We have, I have my opinion of, and I think Kai is going to have his own opinion of when exactly they will be called up. So the first uh, superstar slash superstars, I'd say, actually are the iconic duo. And a lot of people are uh, wondering when these guys are going to get called up, or these girls, sorry, are going to get called up. Surely they're going to get called up together. Uh, I don't know if they're going to go uh, with the whole like splitting these guys up during the call up. Well, so. uh, they were they were backstage at uh, SmackDown last night because it was in Orlando, and everyone's like yeah. freaking out. Oh my god, they're going to debut. And everybody mm-hmm. relax. It's in the <laughs> same city as the taping, so of course they're going to be there to watch it. And we got so, Tiffany in the chat from Deadass Podcast. What is going on, Tiffany? Tiffany Ann. Okay, so um, I don't think they'll be split up. I think they need they need each other. It's just yeah. like another breaking up an Enzo and Cass or uh, the yeah. revival. Like they, they need each other. Mm-hmm. I think they're gonna get called SmackDown. It looks like the oh my god, be SmackDown's the case. division can't get much worse. Yeah. So. And they were backstage at SmackDown this week, so that's you know, it's kind of a. Uh, Hinting more at it. I know because SmackDown was in Orlando that it, it kind of made it easier for them to be backstage at SmackDown. But just it suits – they're they they like a SmackDown duo, pun intended. I agree. Um, and SmackDown Women's Division needs some kind of boost because yeah. this is just horrendous right now with this welcoming committee versus Riot Squad. Oh, God, so, God. The wel- some welcoming committee is going to welcome the iconic duo? <laughs> <laughs> or maybe like I can well, kind of see like – I oh. see like the riot squad trying to get them on their team. You know I hope I mean? the welcoming committee like is released. Two thirds of them. I hope <laughs> Natalia and Timmy aren't even on the roster next by 2019. <laughs> um, I'm thinking they're going to be called at the SmackDown after WrestleMania. I don't think it's going to be this early. I don't think it's going to be after the Rumble. I think maybe after Mania is like the perfect time to do it. You got the hot crowd. Um, Especially got a lot of the UK and Australian people that stay that stick around for the Raw and SmackDown after, so they're going to get a good reaction. So I think SmackDown after Mania is a perfect spot for them. Yeah, I agree. I think they need to get called up soon. They're not really doing anything in NXT right now. It seems like they're kind of moving in with the new blood. So I, I think they deserve to be called up as a as the iconic duo because one or the other just doesn't make sense. Now, do we see any of them in the Royal Rumble this year? The women's Royal yes. Rumble? Yes, I think we will. I think we're gonna see Peyton Royce at least. Not sure about Billy Kay. I can kind of see Billy Kay coming out as like a side person, maybe on the outside, kind of helping Peyton Royce. Like maybe she's about to fall over, and like Billy Kay like helps her up and like keeps her up so she stays in the match. Yes, uh, I think we all. I think everybody agrees that Peyton Royce is like the the standout of the two. So yeah. I think Billy Kay's better in a managing role anyway. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but yeah, I definitely think Peyton Royce. Is, I agree that Peyton Royce is going to be in the Rumble. I think that I'd put money on that. Yeah. Um, so we're going to the next superstar from NXT that is surely get called up sometime this year, and that is Alistair Black. Um, guys coming off a huge uh, rookie campaign in 2017, and this year looks like he's going to have another big year. Um, brand wise, I can kind of see Mr. McMahon loving this dude and having to put him on the his version of the A show, as in uh, Monday Night Raw. So I can kind of see Alistair Black heading over to Monday Night Raw. I highly doubt he's going to go to 205 Live. <laughs> I was just I, about to say that. <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's way too. I, mean, I know, like we've we've seen like Enzo already go over, and for some fucking reason, Goldust, and now uh, Hideo Watami. <laughs> I, I really uh, the, don't think I think the, Alistair Black is just too good. I think Triple H is going to build him up and like not let Vince. I don't think V's going to let Vince do it. I think he's too good of a superstar, and, and, and Triple H likes him too much to let him go up to two hundred five live. So yeah, it, it, w- it would be a waste of talent yeah. for sure. But it, I don't know. I, I could definitely see him on SmackDown to be honest, because I feel like on Monday Night Raw, he's not going to be showcased properly. Yeah. Okay, I kind of see that too. I'm going to stick with my pick. I'm going to stick with Raw. And if it happens, it's not going to be until the Brooklyn call-up. So he's going to have another big six to eight months in uh, NXT this year for 2018. And we'll see. Uh, maybe we'll see him get called up after Brooklyn, maybe during another shakeup or whatnot, or he just shows up out of nowhere. But it's going to be definitely after Brooklyn. So I think that's when we're going to see Aleister Black up on the main roster. Uh... He, I can't really say when I think Aleister Black's going to get called up. I think he's going to have a long run in NXT for a while. I don't know if he'll have a ever champion, like we were saying. He's one of those guys that kind of doesn't need to have a championship, mm-hmm. but I still think he's got a, he's got uh, some unfinished business in NXT for a while. That's for sure. Yeah, he might have. He might even stay longer than that. He might even have another big year. We might not have to. It could even be till after WrestleMania 35. It could be after yeah. then. It all depends on what how big of a year Alistair has, but I mean he's already had a huge year in 2017, like since you started. So all signs pointing towards another big year for Alistair Black. But I'm gonna stick with my pick and say somewhere after Takeover Brooklyn, we're finally gonna get the call up of Alistair Black if they don't have any long term plans at that point. Um, next is a tag team a faction. This one is definitely something to think about. This can go up many ways, but Sanity most likely to get called up this year at some point. Um, whether or not to be all together or separate, it's so tough to tell because you see Nikki Cross, how good she is on her own. You see Killing Dane that can hold his own in a singles competitor. It's just it's it's just uh, Alexander Wolf and uh, Eric Young are the guys likely to stay together at getting called up. But it all depends. Do they keep all four of them up? Do they have plans to feud all four of them with a faction on the main roster? So it's it's really tough to tell. But to me, in my eyes, I think they're going to get called up at the same time. I think the only one to branch off is, at, at first is probably going to be Nikki Cross. I think they're going to keep Dane, Wolf, and uh, uh, Eric Young together. And I know it just to me, it's tough. It, this one's a really tough one to tell. Just because you have half the group that's that can do so good in it, uh, as a singles run or as a singles competitor. Yeah, I think they got to be called up together, and I agree that Nikki Cross is going to branch off into her you know women's singles run. Um, as for when, this is I, tough. I feel like it's going to be <laughs> near the end. Of, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. I think they've they've still got a lot of good matches left with um, Undisputed Era. And I don't think they have, they are done with them yet. I and I really don't, I don't know. I I, I want to wait to see if there's going to be like a, a major faction that they can go up against in the main roster. It would be so good if it was the Wyatt family or if they did another shield reunion, it'd be perfect for them. But as you look at the main roster right now, there's nothing really that stands out. That would be a good feud. Maybe um, if the club stays together, but yeah. I doubt it. Probably not. Oh, we got Michael Chow joining the chat. Oh, the great. former champ is here. <laughs> yeah, that's glorious, Greg. Now, <laughs> Michael Chow is going to be a 16-time champion by the end of the 
you know year. Yeah. And speaking of Michael Chow, guys, this Saturday on live on his channel, Michael Chow TV, we have a round table. Bring it to the table between myself, James from That Ass Podcast, and Michael Chow uh, with a 2017 year in review. It's going to be a great great podcast be sure to check that out it'll be live this saturday 2 p.m eastern time uh i believe that is 11 a.m his time which is pacific standard time so make sure you check that out it'll be live on michael chow tv the podcast go give him a follow as well guys yeah the uh what do you call it the <laughs> the infection that was going around the raw roster made it to michael chow and he's yeah. out for a week <laughs> Hopefully yeah, he doesn't gl- give it to us fellow podcasters. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you're feeling better, Michael Chow. And I love the new mic, by the way. I've seen uh, the picture you, you tweeted on Twitter. Um, anywho, uh, Sandy, I think I, I'm picking SmackDown. I got this weird feeling that they, they're like a SmackDown team because – I mean, oh, SmackDown's division is pretty good right now. you got the New Day. I mean, New Day would be probably a faction to confuse with. There you go. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm I'm liking the the possibilities of feuds on SmackDown currently, unless they have another shakeup, and then who knows. But as it stands right now, I think Sandy would be a good call up on SmackDown. But I do agree with you that it could be another long thing. I wrote down SmackDown after Takeover Brooklyn. I'm kind of second guessing that it could be maybe the Rumble time next year. Well, we might not see Sandy until they get they get called up, which which I thought AOP would get called up by now for. Yeah, because um, you can't call everybody up at the same time. Like they no. need to have some guys that carry the load yeah. down there. Um, I mean, speaking of AOP, I think they should get called up any time now because right now they're not doing anything in NXT. We saw the random promo by Paul Ellering. <laughs> like I'm just like, okay, they've done. I think they've pretty much done enough in NXT. I don't want to see them on NXT anymore. I don't care. Just yeah. call them up already. So they can be I, someone's goons. Yeah. I, man, I'm I'm saying, uh, for some reason, it's just because they're the way they're built, the way they're looked, Raw is where they're going, mm-hmm. and we all know why. Mm-hmm. Vince <laughs> loves those get the way those guys look. Why do I see an AOP faction with Roman Reigns, man? <laughs> <laughs> they have this like Samoan faction. Yeah, like all has Samoan bloodline, and they all wear the same freaking pretty much attire. Just the yeah, Roman yeah, Reigns security team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's his yard, and those are his guard dogs. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they'll uh, end up squashing Braun Strowman, which would make no sense. But, you know, I could see AOP. They have all the big guys on Raw. You know, they got Brock Lesnar, Braun yeah. Strowman, Big Show, Roman Reigns, yeah, Samoa it's... Joe. They're going to have AOP. They got all the big – notice that? They have, like, no big guys on SmackDown. It's yeah. all the big guys on Raw. <laughs> It's 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 Vince McMahon's land of the Giants mentality. He's still living in the past. He's just one of those guys that won't let go of and loves old school wrestling. Oh yeah, but, don't forget about Kane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just one of those guys that doesn't move on. You got to move on with the times. All it's not nineties like, wrestling anymore. No, <laughs> you got to move on. Eventually, <laughs> stuff doesn't but, can't stay the same. It's, it doesn't it doesn't work anymore. But yeah, AOP, I think they need to get rid of fucking Paul Ellering because he does nothing for them. And I really think they need to be somebody's goons. He doesn't really do anything as a manager. Like, he doesn't help them. He doesn't, like, add to them. Yeah, he can. He basically talks to them because all I've heard of Akim, Akim and, Re- and Rezar are. <laughs> That's all I freaking heard out of them. The, the whole teaming with Roderick Strong thing made no sense, but we won't go to that. But they, they just suit being some. being a, Like, they need a leader. They needed like a, a per, like a Roman Reigns or somebody else that can lead and talk for them, and they can just sit behind and be the you know the team. <laughs> yeah, Paul, Michael Challenge. Yeah, Paul Heyman should manage AOP. Pollering is not over. <laughs> Vince Meek Mahan, Mahan. like Meek Mahan. Man. Oh my <laughs> God! Don't even go there. But yes, uh, I think AOP definitely is going to get called up to Raw. I, I would put money on that yeah raw after mania and if uh, we're gonna be there we're gonna see it <laughs> yeah and i'll get up and go to the bathroom with AOP. <laughs> I, I might join you maybe maybe i'll bring my pillow and a blanket and fall yeah. asleep that's <laughs> that'd basically a... what they do to me every time i see them on my television uh, that'd be a great video to put on twitter i'd probably get the rounds um next call up i'm saying drew mcintyre but i'm not i'm not i'm saying not until rumble time next year I think when he comes back from his injury, he's going to pick up where he left off. He's going to have at least a half a year to, to go on. 
No, but... we no. Just keep McIntyre on NXT. This is one of the guys that I want him to just keep. I wish they would just keep guys on NXT sometimes and not call them up because they're just some of those guys. Even Triple H has said in interviews, these guys are better suited for NXT. These guys are better suited for the main roster. Mm-hmm. And Who I knows, think though? for McIntyre is let's see what happened the last time he was on there. Yeah, he he might stay because if if Vince is so invested in this UFL shtick. He might forget about it. We might see Drew just stay. But I, I really wish they would just keep some people down. I think Drew, it would be a big mistake to call Drew McIntyre up to the main roster because we already saw that dumpster fire what they did the last time he was up there. Yeah. My God. But uh, like he's he's not used properly on the main roster. He's much more suited than NXT. He's not. I'm just thinking it like as looking from the outside. If Vince is still running the show at this point, he's still gonna want Drew. We know how much he loved Drew back in the day. So. Now he's built a better name for himself. You know he's gonna want him even more. So that's why I put I wrote down Drew McIntyre on Raw if he does get called up around the Rumble time next year. It might even be in next year's Royal Rumble. Yeah, I like I said I'd love Drew McIntyre to, to redeem what he did in the main roster last time, but part of me, the other half of me, says that he'd just get fucking ruined again, and I'd rather just have him be relevant on NXT and just kind of Michael Chow does bring up a good point here. He he's 32. They can milk him in NXT for years and then just have him like be one of those NXT superstars that never gets called up and has this big retirement thing. And they do this whole like show dedicated to Drew McIntyre. Then like <laughs> you can see that they show like fucking like old footage like on the screen of him in like 3MB. <laughs> yeah, I like I wish there were just guys in and girls and tag teams that they would just keep on NXT. They would, like I, I hate how this mentality of the main roster is like where you have to get to. I feel like NXT could be you know just a place where people they're happy with that. Mm-hmm. Why do they have to get called up? We yeah. see all the extra bullshit that goes into the main roster. Like when you're on NXT, you get you get to travel together. Your stuff's paid for. When you get to the main roster, you got to do your own travel. You have to, yeah. you know, pay like for tw- everything. And it's like you have a 25% chance of actually being used properly. <laughs> we see all the NXT guys, and 80 to 85% of them are not used properly. No. I absolutely and, agree with that. And Cupid Girl, we're not talking about Chris Starr and <laughs> Riley Apex. <laughs> Hey, they're going to be the future of this time. This time. Jared, I have them written down for breakout stars of the year. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Fuck. <laughs> and then Glorious Greg, Big Show comes back to be the manager of AOP. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, here, I got the boo thing. Boo. I'm playing that. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not, Glorious Greg. Go away. <laughs> Hey, you can't talk to our new know, Twitter fan of the year like that. I, I apologize. We're turning him into the new Riley Apex. Oh, God. <laughs> Riley so, Apex. Yes, Drew McIntyre hopefully doesn't get called up, but if he does get called up, you say Monday Night Raw, and I'm just going to be devil's advocate and say Friday night, I mean Tuesday night SmackDown. <laughs> Pull a you on that one with the whole Friday night SmackDown thing. Uh, yeah, I I, I love I, to me Friday night SmackDown just rolls off the tongue. It sounds way better when you say Friday night SmackDown. But you again, I mean? it would be it would be hard with travel, and it would it would be taped. It would go back to the taped SmackDown to be horrendous. So, yeah. um, next I have Lars Sullivan. I mean Gene Snitsky. Gene Snitsky 2.0. I think he's gonna get called up early too. Oh I my god. That, this he guy, I'm surprised Vince hasn't tickled his balls about this guy yet. Yeah. Uh, I, like, this guy, uh, he's just, he's too perfect. He's just the guy that Vince is going to want. And literally, he's going to be the only competition for Braun because what the hell else is Braun going to run through that he hasn't already in, in WWE? They fucking brought back Kane, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Kane equals ratings, all right? Yeah, okay. Maybe for his uh, freaking mayor stuff. That's it. So the only thing I hope is that Braun is in the Rumble, even though he's in that Universal title match. I would love to see Lars Sullivan as like a surprise NXT entry. Uh, oh, yeah. To go against Braun to like give us a tease at the he's Rumble. He's in the middle then... of the ring and people are like freaking like hanging off the rope like by their limbs and just dead. And he just does one of those. Braun! Like here, one of these. Here, I got the effect here. And he's just Braun in the middle of the ring doing one of these. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, like Lars Sullivan's music hits at the at the the zero, and he comes out, and I'm like, uh, that'd be a man, that'd be a yeah. moment right there. That'd be it. Insane. Would be a great tease for when Lars Sullivan does eventually get called yeah. up. So raw for sure, definitely 100. Whoever Braun's gonna be when when this happens, because I have it written down, he's probably gonna get t- uh, called up around Takeover Brooklyn. 
Uh, I wouldn't even be surprised if it was Raw after Mania this year. Seriously. I, I, that, it might even go that early. If, I think this guy's going to be the first one called up out of all these people. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm going to change this. I think Raw after Mania, we're seeing Lars Sullivan get called up. Like Braun Strowman, it's gonna be like Braun Strowman is gonna be in the ring asking for more competition. You know, some bullshit that they they'll give him because they don't know what to do with him. And then Lars Sullivan's gonna come out and he's gonna stare down Braun Strowman. They're gonna Michael Cole's gonna have a jerk fest and talking about their matchup at the Royal Rumble if they do that. You know, just, <laughs> it's gonna be Michael one of those things. What the fuck? Vince will botch it and turn Lars Sullivan into Heidenreich. <laughs> Lars will will be your friend. Lars Sullivan career rest in peace. Oh my God! Please no. <laughs> oh, Heidrich, you mean Cody Rhodes? Yeah, Cody Rhodes looks identical. But yeah, Lars Sullivan, like he's like the next Vince's golden child. Like I'm calling it right now. <laughs> like that guy is gonna be pushed like the next Braun Strowman, like the savior of wrestling. Yeah. Except he... Braun actually worked out. But they're doing such a good job with his entrance. The 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 production team for his entrance lately. Holy crap, man! That's like beyond good. Like, it makes him look like a credible, like, badass, like, you know, you don't yeah. want to fuck with this guy. Like, when they have the spotlight on him in the middle of the ring, and all you see yeah. is, like, the shadow it's, Yeah, of it's him. silhouette. That's great. <laughs> Lars and Braun for tag champs. Oh, man. I can see them doing that, turning both those assholes baby face, and then freaking being tag team champions. They would run. Nobody uh. would beat them. Like, who would beat that team? I'd be like okay, when Kane I'll and Big you, Show uh, were tag team. Remember that? Oh yeah, those guys were dominant. They they like beat all five members of the Spirit Squad at one time. Yeah. <laughs> I know what, I know one team that could go up against those would be uh, Chris Starr and Riley Apex. Oh yeah, they're, they're credible right there. That's a that's a tough test. I mean, I'd save that for WrestleMania in my opinion. <laughs> but yes, Lars Sullivan definitely going to get called up sooner rather than later. Yeah. So that's it for the call ups. I don't know if you had any more that you think might get called up. You want to add to the list? Oh, besides Chris Starr and Riley Apex, I got nothing for you. <laughs> so we're getting to the next category, guys. The next NXT champions. We'll start with the main championship. Um, one, I ha- so I have this listed in order on my page. Um, so right now the champion's Almas. I think that Gargano is going to be the next NXT champion. It's going to be after a feud with Almas. Uh, that is going to lead Gargano to a feud, obviously, with the returning Tommaso Ciampa. And he's not going to... I don't see Ciampa ever winning the NXT title. It's just going to be one of those things. And then, because Black is still going to be down there, I still think... I want to kind of want to see Black with the championship at least once. I know he doesn't need it, but I think Black might win it from Gargano. I can kind of see them doing kind of like a face-versus-face match. Um, or if they decide to turn Black heel, looks like Aleister Black can actually be a definite cool heel. Uh, and then Black will win it from Gargano, and then Black will lead into a feud with Adam Cole... And then Adam Cole will win it from Black. And then that's what I have it set for 2018 and 2018 with Adam Cole as your NXT champion. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure you have uh, your different opinion, but yes. Let's, let's, so let's hear it. What do you think for 2018, Cappy? Well, I, I think Gargano will win it from Almas at some point. Um, I think the whole under, the underdog story with Gargano. And, I mean, none of us thought Almas was going to win it. Look what happened. So, I mean yeah. – um, I think Gargano is going to get the the better of Almas in the end after Almas's win at uh, Takeover Brooklyn. Um, I kind of see Adam Cole winning it from Gargano at Adam uh, Cole, baby. Sure, I kind of <laughs> see Adam Cole winning it from Gargano at um, the WrestleMania Takeover or the one after that, which is what Brooklyn. Yeah, and then on, I honestly think that. It's not even a bias. But I think Roderick Strong is going to win it from Adam Cole. See, I would love that because that's a few that I think is going to happen, regardless of when. It's going to happen at some point because they've already teased these guys feuding with each other, and they had a semi feud that kind of led into that War Games match. We've got nothing out of it after that. I think we're still going to get the Adam Cole Roderick Strong feud. And it should be for the championship, and it should be Adam Cole with the championship, like you said. And it should be the underdog story of Roderick Strong beating Adam Cole for that title. I think that's in the long-term plans of NXT. I, I, I wouldn't have a shadow of a doubt that it's in the back of Triple H's head right now. Because that, that would be a money feud with those two guys, yeah. not just because they were both former ROH champions. but yeah. you, know really sitting back there there. Looking at, you know he's sitting back there looking at these two money feuds in front of him, which is Gargano and Ciampa when he returns. And they can, that's going to be money. And then you got 
this long term feud of Cole and Roderick Strong. They, they got mo- like money feuds in front of them and more that could possibly develop as the year goes on. Mm-hmm. So, um, Lars Sullivan could be a champion. No, that's not bad. Yeah, Big E was. Uh, I don't think Lars. I think Lars is one of those guys that doesn't need a title. He's just gonna get called up and just be dominant. <laughs> it's just cause because Vince McMahon sees because him. Because then who the fuck's gonna beat? The, like, if you put a championship on him, like, who's credibly gonna beat this guy? Yeah, unless, unless they have another big guy on the way, which oh yeah, we haven't we got seen right back coming up. <laughs> um. So as for 2018, I see Gargano being champion at least once. Alistair Black and Adam Cole. You have Gargano. And Adam Cole and eventually uh, Roderick Strong. So yes, definitely a sick year for NXT champions if you look at it from the outside, like going like, looking through 2018. So mm-hmm. it, it's one. It's definitely going to be one of those years where you 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 can't sit here and say, oh shit, what's NXT going to do for this next year? There's like barely anybody. Their their roster right now is stacked. So I can't wait. And with the potentials and more signings and more people getting called up from the performance center on the way, NXT is sure to to grow. Um. Next category, we got the next NXT Women's Champion. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, right off the bat, I think Shayna Baszler is going to win that title. <laughs> Ember Moon's run is not going to be that long. I, I don't, I see, I don't even see it going past the WrestleMania takeover, which will be no. takeover New Orleans. Uh, I think that's where Baszler is going to win it. Um, Baszler is going to win it. She's going to have a dominating uh, time with the championship. Um, I do see her feuding with Kari Zane eventually, and Kari Zane's definitely going to get into a title feud and win it. I think Shayna Baszler would be the perfect person to win it from in that case. Um, I have written down here take over Brooklyn, but I'm starting to think that's a little bit too early for that. Um, I'm going to say the takeover Royal Rumble next year is where we'll see Kari Zane win it from Shayna Baszler. Yeah, so, I was I about to say that I don't see anybody – Besides Shayna Baszler being the next champion for the next year, yeah, no. <laughs> I love to see Peyton Royce at least win it once, so they can have no. like an iconic champion. She's not gonna win it. <laughs> She's gonna get called up and win the NXT or the SmackDown Women's Championship. Good enough. Yeah. But Shayna uh, Baszler for sure is the next champion. You, well, you, she's, you, she's gonna have a dominant run. Like mm-hmm. she's not gonna lose for like I I literally think she's gonna win it. Whenever she wins it, she's going to hold on to it for a year after that, whenever that is. Um, yeah, okay, I can see that. I, I did pick Baszler for this NXT TakeOver in New Orleans, and by the next Rumble, we'll see Kari Zayn win it, or maybe they'll save that until the next uh, NXT TakeOver WrestleMania, and we, which we don't know what it is next year. But, um, yeah, I think we're going to get a really big dominated run from Shane Baszler. I can't see really anyone else unless we got – uh, they they signed some more women throughout the year, but uh, for sure, Shayna Baszler is, I guarantee, going to be the next champion. And then after Ember Moon loses it, she'll be called up. Yeah, I think Kari will win it in a couple, like maybe a year or so, mm-hmm. maybe after Shayna Baszler mm-hmm. has a dominant run because she really needs to have a, a long run. Mm-hmm. Um. She's one of those tough girls, man. She's just she, the presence about her, man, just screams champion. Like she, she's gonna be like, it's almost like I thought at first Kari Zane was going to be the next Oscar, but Shayna Baszler's got it written all over her, man. She could be one of those women that just doesn't lose at all. Yeah, I don't. Uh, to me, Kari Zane doesn't have that type of presence to me yeah, to not, be the yeah. undefeated. No, yeah, we, we'll have to see. I have Bianca Belair. Uh, she's signed with NXT. I think she's gonna be. Uh, we're gonna see a good presence from her. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of podcasts. She's really that... young too, though. I, yeah. I think she's a few years away. She's only like 21, 22 years yeah. old. I think she will be eventually, but I think she's a prospect for sure. Yeah. Um, but she, she definitely a... has a lot of potential down the road. Yeah, raise your red cups. She's uh, dating a Montez Ford of the uh, uh, Street Profits. Speaking <laughs> yes. of Street Profits, let's get into our next tag team champions. For the year of 2018, and I have right off the bat, I think Street Profits are winning those belts, man. <laughs> I think they're gonna win them. Be- I think they're gonna win from them sometime who? this year. <laughs> who are they gonna win it from? I think right now, perfectly would be Undisputed Era. They're a heel team. <laughs> yeah, they're the perfect heel you wanna, team. You want to make Undisputed Era actually have a good run? You can't have them lose to those guys. Yeah, but not yet. That could be a. It could be a good underdog story. Maybe at the the Takeover Brooklyn. 
that could be when I love they lose the, the title profits, but to me they're not a team that's ever going to win the titles. They're just going to uh, be one of those they're going to be one of those teams that rolls around and you know yeah, has good matches. So you think they're going to be the next Enzo and Cash? They they, they yes. get so over that they don't they don't ever win the title belts. I'm just going to disagree. I'm going to disagree. I think they're going to win it. I think this year they're going to we're going to see the title belts along the waist of of Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford, man. It's I can see it. I, 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 just, I just I just can't see them winning it from Undisputed Era. Like I I would have to see Undisputed Era have the titles get taken yeah. off of them somehow for them to win it. And to I know me, this is that's this not is, credible. This is reaching. I have written down here I, after Street Powers would have won. I think Tito Savatelli and your boy yeah! Riddick Moss would win it from this. They have a, a, a they would have a, a feud where the title belt gets changed hands a couple of times. But uh, I can see those guys winning it too. That'd be hilarious, man. They, I want to see them have a good feud. And Riddick Moss, just, I still think Tito could have a way better tag team partner than fucking Riddick Moss. Yeah, but, that's pretty sad. Um, same with, uh, what's his name, Montez Ford could have a better one than Angelo Dawkins, but whatever. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Tito Sabatelli. I think he's, this guy's going places, but mm-hmm. with Riddick Moss, I don't no, know. absolutely not. <laughs> N- no. Like, I feel bad for the guy. He's being put in a tag team with this Glorious Glory Greg, that's way too early. He says that they're going to be at the SmackDown after Mania <laughs> Street Profits. They and just got Greg, there. <laughs> Greg is on some kind of funky cigarettes tonight, man. He's He's been sending some weird oh, shit. Yeah, see, Cuba Girl, TM61. Where the fuck are they? <laughs> Where Are they even with that XD? Where are they contracted? Like, I really want to know. <laughs> like, well, what? The, the one guy got injured, and then we never heard of them again. Okay, so I got the. I'm trying to see if they're still signed with NXT. Uh, Wikipedia has them written as the Mighty Don't Kneel. They're not even TM61. Oh. Uh, That's a mystery. TM61 is a mystery. Yeah, he was he was, he got injured on January 25th of last year, and was expected to be put him out of action for seven to nine months. But he did return from injury on September 14th at a live event. And they were in 2K18's video game. Maybe they just have game. nothing for them. Yeah. Maybe 2018 will be a big year. Maybe we'll see maybe, well, if they're called the Mighty Don't Kneel. Maybe they just got repackaged. We haven't seen them yet. The Curse of the Shark Cage. Yeah, that was literally the last time we saw them wrestle. We were there at that live event. <laughs> oh, you mean the TakeOver Toronto. Yeah. Or, yeah, the TakeOver event. <laughs> But uh, hopefully we'll see something out of TM61. They were pretty good when we saw them, man. They had that huge spot where you climbed that 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 freaking like scaffolding and did that flip off it. Like that was a pretty <laughs> that was a pretty sick move. I think that's where he got injured. Yeah. Um. As for any other tag team, I don't know. What about Heavy Machinery? What do they got? Yeah, I, 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 I don't I saw, see them as a tag team champion in 2018, though. <laughs> That's another team that I think they're like Street Profits. They're over, but like they won't ever win anything. Uh, which is sad. I think they should give these two teams at least an opportunity oh, with the title. Man, Otis Dosevich has some personality, man. For a big, giant, just yeah. meathead <laughs> dude. He's a pretty funny guy. and weights. Yep. Whatever the hell Asa means. I, the hell that means. I think it's a but, gym term. So like when you, you lift a heavy weight, you're like, Asa! Yes. I, I, heavy machinery is growing on me a bit, but I just don't see anything long term with them. But they're yeah. still like, you know, you got to have your mid card yeah. tag team. Yeah. Tag- you know what I mean? I don't know. Realistically, I think Sanity is probably going to win it back from Undisputed Era. Maybe they're going to go back and forth. I don't know. It's really tough to tell, man. It's uh, The tag team division is tough to tell. Maybe there will be some more tag teams on the way, maybe through independent signings, through the Performance Center. Maybe, uh, maybe who knows? Maybe Street Profits and, and uh, we got Tito Sabatelli and Moss and uh, Heavy Machine. Maybe they'll break out this year. Maybe more than we think that they're it's just It's tough to tell from... Uh, uh, this point right now in early 2018, very, very early 2018. Um, but we'll get into the next category here, and that is the next independent signings to NXT. Um, this one is so tough to tell because there's, there's always the rumors that come out of uh, people might be coming Adam to NXT. Cole, baby. Yeah, that was a huge one for 2017. Uh, we also had Tommy and a.k.a. Aleister Black get signed with NXT in 2017. 
uh, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, obviously. And we had the May Young people. Like, should we, there was a lot, a lot of independent signings through NXT this year. Um, this year, uh, I just I have a small list compiled of just out of the latest rumors of what could happen. Um, number one, Ricochet. That's the latest rumors right now that he's about to pretty much be with NXT. That's going to be a big, big signing. King Ricochet is a beast. And I know he's going to be held back a little bit because that's what WWE does. He won't be held back as much on NXT as he would be on the main roster. But we're going to see a lot of good things out of uh, King Ricochet, man. I would even go as far as to see a King Ricochet and Aleister Black feud. Holy man. Take my money right now. If Aleister Black and Ricochet feud with each other, I'm done. Done. I will not watch the main roster anymore. I will not during that feud. God. What made you such a ricochet, Mark? I've followed Ricochet for years. Remember I showed you that match with him and Will Ospreay <laughs> last year, like two years ago. Ah, he's he's no gender. No, I'm sure. Whatever. Gender couldn't lace up Ricochet's boots, okay? <laughs> Pretty sure gender has been a WWE champion. Yeah. <sighs> Gifted. Anyways, Ricochet for sure. That's going to be a big, big signing. Uh, there was the rumor with him of Tessa Blanchard being signed with Ricochet at the same time to be added to the women's division. Uh, we saw her uh, in the May Young Classic, but with an early exit in that really good first round matchup. Um, Tessa Blanchard, the daughter of uh, Four Horsemen, Tully Blanchard. Mm-hmm. So I think there would be loves that. They love the, the, the family stuff, so they're definitely going to give her a go. So we'll definitely see her get signed and be added to the division. Um, I have Tony Storm. I really hope they, they they really sign her because she's definitely a breakout talent in the independent circuit right now, and she's gaining so much momentum. So they need to sign Tony Storm, man. She'd be huge for that division, and she had such a good tournament and such a good showing. Um, and there were slight rumors of her coming back and getting signed with NXT. So, and then I also read that she wanted to go do some independent circuit, kind of like uh, Zack Saber Jr., which I do have written here. Maybe Zack Saber Jr.'s uh, stint is going to be over because he did say last year during the Cruiserweight Classic that he wanted to go do a round of independent circuits and do his stuff in the Indies before signing back with N- or WWE. So, maybe this will be the year we'll see Zack Saber Jr. The guy is a huge. Huge talent, but unfortunately, if they do sign Zack Saber Jr., I do see 205 Live written all over him and join his <laughs> uh, cruiserweight buddies in 205 Live. Yeah, um, he can join his fellow uh, Brit there, Jack Gallagher. Yeah. Um, yeah, Rosemary, she comes over from TNA. Cuba, I did hear about that. I'm um, seeing if anyone else. EC3. <laughs> Not I could uh, I could also see Chelsea Green coming over at some point too. Oh yeah, Zach Ryder's uh, uh, current uh, current yeah, squeeze. She's, she's uh, she, I think she is the new wi- champion, women's champion on TNA as uh, what the hell's her damn name? Laurel Van Ness. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but Chelsea Green's got some potential. She's got a good look. She's a good wrestler. She actually came out of um, Lance Storm's uh, wrestling academy in uh, Calgary. Yeah. So. I think they signed a lot of uh, the May Young people. I think they're really looking hardcore at that for expanding the women's division. Because that's definitely how you're going to have to grow the NXT women's one. Because if Ember Moon's on the way up this year, and same with Iconic Duo, you're going to have to fill it back up. So uh, Michael Chow wrote down Santana Garrett versus Piper Niven was his favorite match. That was a really, really good match. Both of them could get signed with NXT. I would have no problem with that. Um, especially Piper Niven, man. Great, great showing by her in the tournament. Um also, Will Ospreay, that's definitely a huge one that people want to see in NXT. The guy is an incredible piece of talent. We're going to see it live, or not live, we're going to see it tomorrow, Wrestle Kingdom 12. He's in a Fatal 4 match with Marty Skrull and a couple other people. That, it, the Japanese names, it, it takes me a while to remember. I can only think yeah. of NATO and, <laughs> and, uh, and Okada off the top of my head. Um, yeah, they're, they're definitely not coming, but... Um, I don't think Vince wants to sign a bunch of TNA guys. I think he's got enough TNA people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's gonna take the whole TNA roster. Uh, yeah, James Storm. Yeah, we already saw James Storm stint in NXT. I don't know if he'd ever come back. Oh, Allie and Braxton. And Braxton yeah, Pepper Park. I hope yeah. to come back and be Pepper Parks and Cherry Bomb. That'll be the perfect names for them in WWE. That'd be bro. great. We actually met Braxton Sutter. His name is Pepper Parks in the Independence at a local wrestling event last year. 
He is a great guy. I hope yeah. he gets a shot at some yeah, point. Coolest dude, man. I just the best part of that whole House of Hardcore event was we're the only ones cheering him. Literally, out of everybody there, we're the only ones standing up and giving him a round of applause. And he looked at us and gave us a nod and pointed at us. Like, we were like, yeah! Pepper Parks, man. Sex, weights, and protein shakes. I don't think he yeah. can wear that shirt, but... Yeah, we went to talk sweet. to him after, and he, he knew, like, he acknowledged us. He knew we were the people cheering him. Like, the guy is such a chill dude. Like, he was really, really yeah. cool to meet. Um, My girl, she bomb, but I don't know where the fuck she was, but... Anyway, yeah, I'd love to see them as as a couple. I thought that's what they were gonna do with um, uh, with, with the Canellis, Maria Canellis and Mike Bennett, but it seems like yeah. they went a different way with that. But I could really see Braxton and Ali being like that couple on NXT. Yeah. After uh, we're not gonna see Omega because after we seen him sign his extension with uh, New Japan, I don't think we're gonna see him for a while if he even does come over. Young Bucks, probably not. I know a lot of people want them to come to NXT. It seems as well. like WWE has a lot of beef with them right now. <laughs> yeah. I okay, I love what Michael Shaw wrote here. This is one thing. Love to see Cody Rhodes to NXT, but Rhodes seems to be doing well without WWE. Yeah, they're making a shit ton of money outside an independent circuit. So it was really hard. They would have to really slow down a lot in the indie circuit to come back. Like they're they're what? even they're even like getting their own show, like their own funded show. Like independent show, so you know they're making a lot of money. Was like the NWO over here? Yeah, <laughs> pretty uh, much, man. This is the bullet. Honestly, is. I don't. I wouldn't want Cody to come back. I want him to shove it to Vince and to, you know to say like, look what I can do on my own without yeah. the stupid garbage Stardust gimmick that you gave me and yeah, held and me not back. Using, for so he, long. Not even using his last name. He's going as Cody everywhere because Derby won't let him use the Rhodes name. How pathetic yeah. is that? Yeah, That's, Hangman but, Page. I don't know. It depends if he splits away from the Bullet Club. It just seems like anyone with the Bullet Club or associated right now is just making way too much to even <laughs> think about coming to the Derby, man. And with them handing cease and desist everywhere, it's just like, why would you? Ah, uh, so. oh yeah. Uh, speaking, it seems like Vince hates the Bullet Club because we saw what happened with WWE's Twitter UK Twitter account. Yeah, yesterday. they they hashtag Bullet Club and they had to take it down right away. And all <laughs> right away, Nick and Matt Jackson were on Twitter about it. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, it's coincidentally the club gets back together the same week as Russell Kingdom. Oh, that's a little weird. Uh, anyways, that's it. So what we have for signings. Um, yeah, not Joey Ryan. There's no way Joey the Ryan is, is a coming. fucking bomb man. I can't stand that guy. <laughs> I don't think he's ever coming to the Dark Beat. Not especially with his gimmick. No, absolutely not. Um, what about uh, my boy Alberto El Patron? Yeah, he's never he's coming back. That panicking. bridge has been blown up. It's not even burnt. That bridge is exploded into the atmosphere. Come on! Dude, he's not coming back. There's no way he's coming back. Can we make a bet on which one of our boys come back first, Del Rio or CM Punk? <laughs> that's a, dude, they're, I don't think both of them are ever coming back, so they're not even taking that can they, bet. Can they come back as like a like a stable, as like the anti-WWE guy? God, yeah, they'd be like right to censor 2.0. Come on, that'd be great, and they could have Justin Roberts as their entrance, uh, their ring announcer, and yeah, fuck. Yeah. Okay, I'm going way off topic oh, here. Oh god, but... Michael Chow. <laughs> yeah, Goldust being too. Old. I don't know if that's even legit. Hopefully, this was just a weak thing. And we'll never see Goldust again. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think Goldust is in pretension for cruiserweight of the year right now. He's two thirty two. He's not in two five live. Get them fuck out of there. Like, what the fuck? Like, well, it, just, it just shows how much they care about the two hundred five live division. They don't so care. What, what's next? Are we gonna get Big Show on two hundred five live? Yeah, oh, I'll be done. I'll be done. Absolutely finished. Uh, anyways, let's move into the next category here. Getting off topic. The next future endeavors from NXT of the year. And I got a couple here. Number one, Oni Lorcan. Sadly, I don't think this guy's ever doing going anywhere, getting called up, or he's just he's like up and down. Like we seen him on the main roster a couple times, all of a sudden we seen him in NXT and he had a couple good matches. I don't think he's gonna last. I think he's the next one to be released. Uh, from NXT and basically the WWE. What about his? What about his partner there? What's his name? Uh, oh yeah, uh, Danny Burke. Probably him too. I don't see these guys being a team <laughs> unless they kept him around to be just the, the jobber team or to have other teams face up against. I don't know. They got, they're the, the they're the Sin Cara of NXT. You got to be credible. You got to get through these guys. Sure, I think they're going to be uh, gone. 
Uh, next on the list, unfortunately, our girl from Toronto, because I don't see her getting pushed in this jam-packed women's division and the growing women's division, but Aaliyah, I don't see her going anywhere. I don't think she's going to get called up on the main roster because literally there's nowhere for her to go. If she gets called up, she's going to have like an Alicia Fox, Dana Brooke role. She's going to be a jobber, and she's not going to do anything. It sucks. I know she's a fellow Canadian, but I don't see her I just don't see longer. her having a character. Like She just doesn't yeah. have any... Yeah character to get me invested in her right now so yeah. uh, don't next, see it buddy murphy and wesley <laughs> blake the even old they're not even a team anymore no they split up and then they never did anything with them afterwards so God, i think well, both I... of them are sayonara peace out by the end of next by the end of this year maybe they try to relive their whole thing with alexa bliss and have like a different woman as their manager again <laughs> I don't know, maybe they get called <laughs> they up have, and uh... they try to get alexa bliss to get back with them i don't know I think uh, Alexa Bliss carried those two guys because they... yeah, the, the, the fact that she got called up like a long time ago and they have done nothing but them just points towards future endeavored for me. So they're just waiting for the contracts to expire and then see you later. Yeah, Buddy Murphy and Wesley Blake, man, best of luck in your future endeavors. Yeah, but uh, where the hell is? Yeah, good question. Where's No Way Jose? I hope they don't think about l- releasing him because that guy is over. Why would you release someone that's over? Oh, wait, it's WWE. That's right. Well, it's like NXT. Some that's over. They don't usually do that in NXT. Yeah, I don't know where the hell he is, man. I hope he comes back. I hope he has. Uh, they have something planned for him. But uh, that's what I have written down for future endeavor. I can't really see anyone else on the way out. Uh, let me pull up the NXT roster right now, and then I'll give me a minute. <laughs> I'll, I'll find about five people for you. Five people, really? You think so? I don't know. I, I looked at it. That's where I got. That's actually where I got Wesley Blake and Buddy Murphy from. Because I'm like, oh yeah, shit, they're still around. <laughs> like, when's Let's... actually the last time we've seen any of them? I can't think of it. Uh, remember, didn't they say Buddy Murphy like teamed with some random dudes that like made a faction? Oh yeah, they had that weird jobber faction, and then they never did anything with it again. They just they stopped doing anything with it because it's like, they're like, oh, it they're... might work, and the next day they sleep on it and they wake up and they're like, ah, no, maybe not. Yeah, Leo Rush too. I don't know if he's still getting. Yeah, punished. where? What's going on with that guy? Is he still being punished for that one comment he made? I don't know. It's it's t- I mean, it's tough with NXT only being one hour, and you have so much talent to be used, right? And you have so many storylines, so it's hard to fit yeah. everybody in. Maybe TM sixty one might be the next to be released. Honestly, like if they're not going to do anything, yeah, with them. probably I can see that. If they're not uh, doing anything with them, I'd see them being released. I really hope Riddick Moss gets released because that guy's fucking useless. <laughs> Who would you uh, replace him with? The, the Velveteen Dream. Te- I'd rather just Tito go on a singles run. I don't think he needs yeah. fucking Riddick Moss. Or have being a manager, his... kind of like Ooh. when Del Rio first started. He was that rich yes. kind of gimmick, and then he had uh, uh, what's his face as a manager. Uh, Get him a valet. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I can kind of uh, see him doing that, and that'd be kind of like a spit in the face. I'm surprised Triple H hasn't done that yet. It's a spit in the face to Del Rio. Yeah, I, I, Riddick Mosh, just get the fuck off the roster, please. Uh, another guy, well, what's his name? Sawyer Fulton, the other uh, NXT uh, lifer, got released a while back. Russell would have said him. And other than that, yeah, that, that's about it. But Riddick Moss, 100%, get the fuck off NXT. He's terrible. Yeah. Uh, um, next category. The next breakout star in NXT. Well, so- we got we to gotta talk about Chris Starr and Riley Apex. <laughs> I mean, the name is right there in the in the category star. <laughs> <laughs> With two R's. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Tian Bing, that Chinese guy they signed. I've hey, never seen that, that guy, guy anymore. I have that guy's rookie card somehow. <laughs> yeah. Where the hell is he? <laughs> yeah, the guy that they debuted in the... <laughs> they made such a big deal about it. <laughs> the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I've never yeah. seen him again. Like, oh, yeah, the first Chinese signed wrestler by Derby. Then, oh, yeah, we're not, not going to do anything with him anymore. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Anyways, um, we got, uh, yeah, we're not talking about that team. We were kidding. Anyways, next breakout star I have written down, Roderick Strong for sure. 2018 is going to be a big year for him. Um, yes. I, all, all signs point towards like they, 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 they're they you know they have a lot behind this guy, and they think a lot about him because they already had those two giant like promo videos for him. One at a random time, one it made sense with the storyline that he was in. Um, but it just looks like they they, ha- they have a lot behind this guy, and they, they think a lot of behind him. So I think we're going to get a big year out of uh, Roderick Strong going into 2018. So I see him getting a big breakout this year. Um, to bring back Alex Riley. <laughs> no. 
Uh, Velveteen Dream, just because of the momentum he's rode into 2018, man, my God, he's gotten so over. Even if it's just a heel, even if he's just getting the booze, he's st- still considered over, man. He's still getting doing the crowd. His job. Get, yeah, get, yeah, doing his job and getting the reaction that he he's looking for. And so, when he comes back from this injury, whatever yeah. it is, we don't really have much info on it. But I can see a big, big year out of Velveteen Dream. Uh, Undisputed Era, just it, it, all signs are pointing towards these guys being like the top of the NXT roster and just dominating the tag team division and Adam Cole dominating the uh, main main card uh, roster spot. It, mm-hmm. just, it, it just seems like they're going to have another big year. And uh, I put our boys Street Profits, man. These guys are riding a big momentum train right now, and they're going they're getting over week by week, even going when they're going to like other places and doing these NXT tapings. They're just getting so over. I see them having a big year, man. <laughs> Like, it's, remember when Big Cass, even though they didn't win anything, remember when Big Cass, their year they had before they get called up, they were riding a big wave of, of uh, momentum and and being over. I think that's what's going to happen with these guys. Like, these guys are going to be the next, like, giant over tag team. So, I see 2018 being a big year for them. I, I love the Street Profits. I, I hope you're right, but... To me, I just don't see them being tag team champions. Yeah. Oh, I get that. Okay. I, uh, except for the manager part, because I want Bianca Belair to flourish on her own too. Uh, Montez Ford would be a great solo wrestler one day, because he is just incredibly athletic. Man, the guy is intense. Um, man, I've never seen somebody get so much height on a on a frog splash before. Yeah. Like, <laughs> guy is crazy. Yeah, I thought Eddie Guerrero was like the the guy who can go really high. But holy crap, man, Montez Ford is just like. Wow. The guy is incredibly um, athletic and gifted. So, speaking of breakout, I found where Tian Bing is. Oh. He is listed on the NXT live events roster. Apparently, there's a separate roster. There's a live people. event roster. Oh. Apparently, there's just people that are on NXT live events. Okay, then. Here we go. We're going to name you off. Right? You heard it here first on No Holds Barred. Adrian Yaud. Oh, Adrian ba- Yaud. He's going to be a ba- big... <laughs> Babatunde Ayabushi. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Babatunde Ayabushi. Oh, him. That's literally his real name. <laughs> Big Boa. <clears throat> Brennan Williams. Chad Lale. Christopher Dyack. Dan Mantha. Demetrius Bronson. Eric Bugenhagen. Gabriel Ely. Jason. That's literally the guy's name. Jason. Jason. Oh, Jason. Jeet Rama. Jeet. <laughs> Kishan Raftar. Kona Reeves. Marcel, Mar- Marcel <laughs> Barthel. Who are Nick- these guys? These guys have to be like the, the performance center guys. Raul Mendoza. Rocky. Oh, we got another Rocky coming up. Look out. Uh, Steve Cutler, Uriel Ely, and Tian Bing. Tian Bing, hey, he's alive. <laughs> and uh, and also for female, Abby Laith, Dakota Kai, Jesse Alaban, Rena Gonzalez, Rhea Ripley, Sage Beckett, and Zeta. So we a couple from the what do you call it? The NXT uh, May Young Classic. There, yeah. Tiffany says, "Say Boo Hagen again." <laughs> what? Say Boohagen again. <laughs> Eric Boogenhagen. 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 Bubba Tunde Ayagbushi. <laughs> My boy Bubba Tunde, man. I love that name. Yeah. And it says Zeta, ha- inactive, hasn't appeared in over 30 days. No. So, but yes. Yeah. So and then there's also a list of unsigned personnel, <laughs> which I'm not going to get into right now, but okay. we found where Tian Bing is. <laughs> and apparently NXT has a separate live event roster, house show roster. So Jason maybe some of those Lee people serial killer gimmick. <laughs> do you see any of these people coming up? Maybe I, crack the NXT roster. Maybe, maybe under different names. I don't know. These kind of sound like I'm just a list of performance center people. <laughs> I'm going to go with Bubba Tunde Ayagabushi. I think he's going to have a big year in 2018. You know, my boy Bubba Tunde, he's, okay. he's got future NXT champion written all over him. Where the hell were Chris <laughs> Starr and Riley Apex? Why are they not on this list? Because they used to be on that list. Now it's been updated. Now they're on the main roster. But seriously, who the hell is Jason and Rocky and Ming? <laughs> My but boy maybe... Rock, Rocky and Jason in a form of tag team. Rocky Jason. Rocky Jason. But if we're being realistic here, the only guy I know is T and Bing. So maybe he gets a shot in the next T in the next year. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. 
<laughs> as for breakout stars, you know, do you have anyone else you think it'll be have a breakout year this year? I think Shayna Baszler we can add to the list. I think yes. she's gonna have a really big year. Shayna Baszler is dominant. Um, Johnny Gargano, I think, is basically is good. It's the start of his breakout right now. So Johnny Gargano too is gonna have a breakout year this year, and definitely gonna, like he's. He is so over right now, too. He's so ridiculously over. Like, as we've seen this past uh, week on NXT, holy moly, man. This guy is going to have another good year, too. Um, next category, the next NXT Rookie of the Year. Who we think is going to win NXT Rookie of the Year? And we'll start off with the males. Uh, I think it's going to be Adam Cole. I think he's going to have a big year as well. And it's going to lead more into the second half of this year. A little bit from the first year, more into the second half. But I'm thinking... Uh, Adam Cole is going to be the rookie of the year for sure this year for NXT. <laughs> what do you think? Sorry, I'm, I'm just going back and reading these comments from when no. I was reading that list. <laughs> Jason, where the what is he the serial killer gimmick? <laughs> yeah, Adam mm. Cole, I guess you can still call him a rookie. But yeah, Adam Cole definitely rookie of the year candidate. Maybe maybe Tion Bing if we ever see the yeah, guy. Yeah, Tion Bing, maybe Tion or Bubba Tunde. I can consider getting rookie of the year if we see more Bubba Tunde, man. I got to keep an eye. I got to keep an eye on him. Got to keep a watch on him. And we always got to put Chris Star Riley Apex in the back of our minds too, you know. Yeah, those guys. Can't, can't forget about far. those guys. If we're being serious though, I can't really think of anybody right now. It give me a minute. Let yeah. me pull up the roster real quick. Yeah. Um, so if there's something you want to go over. Well, I'm just going to go into my woman. The woman I okay. picked, um, Shayna Baszler. I, I wrote down Kari Zane, but I totally forgot about Shayna Baszler. I think she's going to have be a rookie of the year, man. Just It has all signs pointing towards dominant year for Shayna Baszler and being that next dominant woman from oh. coming from Asuka. So I'm picking Shayna Baszler as the woman for winning the NXT rookie of the year next year. Yeah, like I'm not even going to comment on that because uh, I'm literally going to say the same thing. Shayna yeah. Baszler is going to be – she's the real deal. And I found – why have we not talked about Pete Dunne yet? Oh, Pete Dunne. It, it just – it depends, man. It, it, it all depends on how much more they're going to use these UK guys. So far, we've seen them been used, being used a lot. Maybe this is a, a sign that they're going to be putting more of these UK guys on NXT to fill – maybe to fill the roster a little bit more. I'd love that. And that goes into the one category we have in the next uh, NXT if they're going to introduce a new belt. I just put the, the UK belt as the mid-card belt. Like, we've talked about this it. before in the show. They don't even have to create it. It's there. Yeah. Yeah, we, like, we've talked about we're this not multiple gonna, times. Yeah. We're not going to get that UK show. It's not going to happen. So they might as well just use it as the minor title. Yeah. And it gives more guys an opportunity to go after something, not just the main title. Because other than that, the guys on the mid-card are kind of just floating there fighting for nothing. But my God, like that Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate match. <sighs> that's probably the best match I've ever seen there to be. Like, that was insane. <laughs> and it goes up, then that's all the way up there with Shawn Michaels and Undertaker from WrestleMania 25. Michael Shaw uh, puts Bianca Belair as Rookie of the Year for women. Ooh. I also see big things from this guy if they push him right. Fabian Eichner. Oh, yeah. They, they're doing a lot behind him, man, and, and showcasing him a lot. If they chose to showcase him more, he did have some good showings. So we'll see what happens. He had happened. that match he, against Almas where he had some good moves on yeah, him there. Yeah, and then uh, he's from the Cruiserweight Classic, if you guys don't know. Um, well, Shawn Michaels, what? <laughs> okay. What are you talking about, Tiff? That, oh, I thought it was Greg. Um, I thought I was going to say. Uh, oh, here's a guy I forgot to tell you about. Future Endeavored, Cassius Ono. Get the fuck off uh, of I don't think he's going to. Get he's him out of here. I know Get, you want him gone. Oh, no. He's off my TV. Thank God. I don't Get think him the hell out of here. I know you want him off, but I don't think he's going to go Chris anywhere. Chris Hero is absolute garbage, You man. know he's going to get called up at some point. You know he's not going anywhere. Yeah, well, as you, much as you want him out. I'm going to rip on Jinder. I'm going to rip on Cassius Ono, all right? So. I don't like the guy. I'm just saying, like, I don't see him being future endeavored. <laughs> Anyways, they just made <laughs> You gave me a sour taste from both thinking of Cassius Ono. Anyways, the uh, next category I have is uh, what new type of takeover we think. So you guys have your ideas out there. Uh, what? Because we have we've had had different kinds of takeovers so far. We've had NXT Takeover War Games. Um, they've gone to different cities. I'm I'm seeing maybe they'll go to different cities this year. We'll get some more different ones. We we're gonna have Takeover New Orleans for the first time. We're gonna have Takeover Philly. Um, they're for sure going back Takeover Brooklyn because that's where SummerSlam is every time in August. 
But for types of takeovers like we've had, um, like before we had takeover the end, which was kind of like a, uh, a cage stipulation to one. Um, to me, I think they should be doing an NXT takeover uh, money in the bank. I think NXT deserves like a money in the bank ladder match. I think we need to see something out of that. Definitely to grow the NXT brand and to be, you know, kind of sort of compete with the main roster. You know, their, their label is the developmental ta- uh, developmental roster and the developmental brand. I can I can see a takeover Money in the Bank happening at some point, or maybe it happens the same weekend of Money in the Bank. Um, so for for gimmick wise, I'd love to see a takeover Money in the Bank. That'd be sick. We just did get War Games, so I guess anything's possible, right? Yeah. Uh, as for cities, everyone's put in the chat. They can do Takeover Japan. Uh, that would be awesome. They can do it at the Tokyo Dome. I can definitely see a Takeover Japan if they ever wanted to go that route. We've seen Takeovers overseas with London. Um, hopefully, we see them go to other places over there. Maybe like a Takeover, uh, yeah, as we said, just Japan, Takeover Australia, Takeover Russia. You know, something different. You know, expand NXT out of the way. Uh, Michael Chow, right there for gimmick wise, NXT King of the Ring. Because Darby is not going to do it, so might as well have NXT do it. And I can see definitely NXT doing a type of King of the Ring tournament. Um, that'd be sick. Yeah, because it doesn't look like WWE is planning on bringing it back anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Um, what about like a type of like Taboo Tuesday or Cyber Sunday type thing? <sighs> yeah, but I'm so against these. These, You know how much I'm against I feel these, like NXT would actually ones. put it into consideration though. It's even, but even if they would, it's still hard to do because you know wrestlers have to train for a certain match type before they even do a certain match. It's like it maybe be... maybe they get like two choices. You get to choose between two things. That way they can at least prepare for those two different types of matches. Yeah, I can say that. Or maybe they they just make it too obvious of which pick is going to be picked, so they just prepare for that yeah. obvious pick. We're pick a we're going to pick an extreme rules match or a submission match. Yeah. I wonder which one you're going to choose. <laughs> Watch submission win. <laughs> Fuck, we're screwed. <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, yeah, I I'd want to see more gimmick type of takeovers this year because we've seen how successful uh, War Games was. I can kind of see them going okay. Now that we've seen how successful War Games is, let's try to branch off. So Money in the Bank, King of the Ring, uh, maybe they do a Hell in a Cell one. We finally see a Hell in a Cell match in NXT. Um, who knows? So I think we can definitely see another year branch off this year for 2018 and definitely go over to other cities that they haven't already been. Um, maybe somewhere, maybe they take over Vancouver, somewhere else in Canada. We'll see what happens. But definitely some more out of uh, the NXT takeovers heading into 2018. I wrote down GMs. I don't think William Regal is going anywhere. I think this guy's sticking for forever. Yeah. Uh, I can't see another GM taking his place unless they had someone in mind that could actually do a good no, job. Regal's but, perfect because yeah. he actually works with the talent too, not off yeah. TV. So yeah, it just, I think he's just perfect role. And as uh, title belts, I said before, the UK belt. Or I'd love to see an NXT mid-card belt. I know a lot of the people. The hardcore like, title? Yeah. I, <laughs> I see people on the community creations on 2K make like a television title or like a light heavyweight belt. So they need something. We've said it for either way. Yeah, they need whatever it is. Yeah, I don't even care if it's the ugliest belt in the world as long as it's there. But uh, other than that, 2018 is sure to be a big year for NXT. And uh, I've uh, I've got another category that we could talk about quickly. Okay. Um. Main roster people that we'd like to see sent back. Ah, yes. Number one of people. <laughs> has got to be our boy Ty Dillinger. 150, or 110 here, I'll fit it right, 110%. Ah. Uh, this guy needs to go back down. But, but, signs are pointing recently that we might see something if they choose to put him on TV more. There's a signs of a heel turn from Ty Dillinger, and if that means more TV time for Dillinger, I'm all for that. But if not, send this guy back to NXT because this guy could flourish right now in NXT and have a lot of good, uh, lot of good feuds with a lot of the talent down there. Man, he just he, he benefits more than NXT. Like you call them up and then you do nothing with them. You had a few in English for weeks on end, and you do nothing with them after that. I don't know. It's it's weird. Agreed. It, it, yeah. And like I said, if they they really need a mid card title, and then they could bring back guys like Ty Dillinger, and they could feud yeah. for a mid card title. I'm, Apollo Cruz is another guy that got called up way too quickly. Yeah, I mean, now he's stuck in the Titus brand. I think he's he's screwed now. <laughs> but he was he was one of those guys that just 
he was called yeah. up way too early. He hadn't proven anything in NXT when they called I, him up. I think up. Zack Ryder could flourish from going back down. He's not really doing anything much on the main roster. Yeah. I like I was Zack saying Ryder Sammy back Zane down there. for a while, but Sami nah, Zayn's nah. doing good work now. Oh, man. Him and Owens right now is the best work on SmackDown. It's what's keeping SmackDown like alive right now, to be honest. Yeah, and no, I'd, but... put, I'd put Shinsuke and Bobby Roode back down there because right now I hate what the fuck they're doing right now with both of them. <laughs> Um, honestly, people are gonna say like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" I think Bailey could go back to NXT. Like, oh my god, like she could talk about somebody that fell from grace. Yeah, Bailey just completely like you could say like, "Yeah, well, NXT would be a downgrade for her," but like, the fuck is she doing right now anyway? So, yeah, like, Mike and Maria Canellas when they come back for sure. Maybe maybe they bring her back down. They they repackage her somehow. And bring her back up as a star that she can be, but Bailey right now, I could definitely, I would, I would consider moving her back because what the hell is she doing right now? Yeah, she's only going down downhill. She's on a downward spiral right now. I'd like the the one idea Cube Girls Road Chat, the cruiserweights. I'd oh. love them to go down there because well, we've been saying they should be at full sail from the, from yeah. the start. I, think, I like that better. What am I talking about? Um, I'm gonna go back to what Michael Chow put in the chat here. I want to see another NXT Iron Man match. Pete Dunne versus Tyler Bate in an Iron Man match for the UK Championship. Final score, Tyler Bate 100 wins, Pete Dunne 101 wins. Match of the century. <laughs> Those two guys just fight forever. Literally, I'd love to see them fight forever. I wouldn't give a shit. Um, um, can the Riot Squad go back to NXT? Because I don't want to see them on SmackDown anymore. Yeah, that was another... Uh, it's just... it's. It's so too much like absolution. It's like why? Why are they copying both things at the exact on same time? It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> Ruby Riot is not a leader either. I'm sorry. She's she's not believable as a leader of a faction. No, it's it, to me it's so dry and it's so pathetic and it's pathetic that they're copying the exact same from Absolution. It's like why do I have to see the same crap on two different shows? Stop like that, that's just pure laziness. It's like back what I said when these guys first debuted. I'm like, if they copy each other, it's just going to be a showcase of laziness and how creative has no idea what the fuck they're doing. There you go. Case and point. They have no idea what the hell they're doing. <laughs> Michael Chow has an interesting thought here. I can see Emma getting re-signed in a year after she dominates the indies. Emma would be a great back in NXT. Well, she was great when she went back to NXT and repackaged this heel Emma. Yeah. Can we agree that Jinder Mahal needs to go back to NXT to improve no! his mic skills? <laughs> mic no. skills, yes. To improve his mic skills and learn how to talk louder on a microphone because he sounds nobody, like this nobody right cuts now. better promos on SmackDown than oh Jinder Oh, my Mahal. God. Okay, enough. We're not talking about Jinder anymore. Let's stop. Let's stop. 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 Hey, they started it. <laughs> they, did. they went there. I got to talk about it. Yeah. I'm done talking about it. As for that, anybody else you can think of that could go back to NXT for some seasoning? Ah. Uh... Nope. Curtis Axel, maybe? Yeah, sure. They're just jobbers. They, they, they belong on the main <laughs> roster, so. Um, anybody from 205 Live, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, they brought back the welcoming community. <laughs> yeah, Ron SmackDown this week. Oh, my Lord. What about Dana Brooke? Could she go back to NXT? She shouldn't yeah. have been called up from the beginning. Well, you know, she looks like she's, she's doing good as a statistics person for the Titus Catering brand, you know? Got to get the statistics and see how much people actually go and eat back there, and got to make oh. sure they keep the, the the pancakes going. You know, got to see how yeah. much how many how many pancakes and new day take off the catering tray every the, week. The, obviously, that chicken soup was a hit because Naya brought some to Enzo. Yeah, that was a, that was great chicken soup from the Titus Catering. Now they're trying something new for the holidays. You know, they know it's cold out there, so they tried a chicken soup, and uh, you know, we got, I guess we can thank Dana Brooke Big for for bringing that recipe down to the Titus Catering brand. Anyone Worldwide, are uh, from uh, SmackDown. They could move. Maybe Mike Canillis. Why doesn't he go yeah, back? Yeah, Mike to, and Maria. That's what should, they were saying in the he chat. He should have yeah. originally been in NXT to, from the start. I don't know why they went right to the main roster. I hope when they come back, they they, they go to NXT. They don't need to be on the main roster right now because there's literally no spot for them. They're just they're, they're they're things screams NXT, and it'd be perfect for NXT. Um, I think they would have gotten more over if they had a start in NXT. Mm-hmm. So. I agree with you about Zack Ryder too. I think he could go down. Maybe Mo- Mojo Rawley. I just he he. I just want him off my television. I think the so hype bros were called up way too fast, man. They they got built down at NXT and they got called up way too fast. 
And same with the Lucha Dragons, man. I love the Lucha Dragons down in NXT. They just they got called up way too fast as well. So yeah, that's how I feel about the Riot Squad right now. I feel like all three of them aren't ready for yeah. the the big show yet. But that's all I can think of currently. Yeah. But uh, big year coming for NXT in 2018, man. I'm I'm liking the direction it's going. I love the hype that it's building. I love the rumored hype that it's building. And then it's just, it looks like it's going to be another big year for the actual A brand in the WWE. But uh, I think that's going to do it. I think we've done we've uh, said what we need to say in this hour and 50 minute long podcast. So. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for episode 84 of the Lowdown Show. Special edition NXT 2018 preview right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT. And No Holds Barred, anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters. And you can follow my co host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. You can follow us on Instagram at No Holds Barred WP, all one word. You can also listen to us on the go on iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher Radio. Spreaker is a fantastic, fantastic podcast app. I highly suggest you go download it. You can chat with us live on the air while we're on the air. And you can follow and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast as well. If you want to watch any video versions of this podcast, any unboxing, 2K content, all that jazz, that is all on our YouTube channel. Be sure to go subscribe to it, youtube.com slash NHBWR. Hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week on the Lowdown Show, I am joined by my co-host. He's the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Cooper Cappy. Asa, Asa, and we are always reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. They're looking at the real deal now. Ooh. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> Is that what you got? Listen, if you own the street, we're back to the